Good morning. I want to welcome you to Good Shepherd United Methodist Church's online worship service. It is a joy that you have chosen to be with us on this Sunday. As we gather today in person at Good Shepherd, we have entered a new phase of our pandemic health and safety precautions with a relaxing of our mask mandate. I would like to share with you a story regarding this. Two weeks ago, our public schools here in Charles County relaxed the mask mandate for students. This meant that students could choose to keep wearing a mask or choose not to do so. On the first day of this new, new protocol, my daughter Becca shared with me a conversation that she had with a friend who was in a few of her classes. The friend said to her, I'm not going to wear a mask in most of my classes, but I'm going to wear it in Mr. Newstead's class because he has a newborn baby at home. I want to help him keep his baby safe. This friend, all of 14 years old at most, made a decision out of love and respect for another. And I appreciated that. This week, our congregational leaders made the decision to remove the mask mandate from Good Shepherd. We made this decision after Maryland State Department of Education and Child Care Administration relaxed their guidance for education and child care centers, such as the one that we proudly run here at Good Shepherd. Our highest priority since March 2020 has been the health and safety of our community, including Good Shepherd Education Center. Throughout the last two years, we have privileged the health of our most vulnerable members, including GSEC children and families, above all else. That priority has never shifted. As your pastor, I'm going to be happy for those who are in person this week to see the fullness of some of your faces again. I've missed that. But I will likely keep my mask on for a while longer, except when I am preaching or speaking. Our choir has also made their own decision to remain masked for right now because of their close proximity to one another and the reality that singing spreads virus at a 70% higher rate than just speaking. I am grateful that they are modeling for us what it means to have a courageous, grace-filled conversation that leads to mutual respect. I would ask for all of us to do likewise, to have grace-filled conversations with one another, to not be afraid to ask, is it okay if I remove my mask while I'm standing or sitting close to you? Or to check with others as we offer signs of physical affection, like hugs, especially as we are unmasked. Jesus calls us to be a people of grace and love right now. That means modeling that grace and love to all as they make individual decisions. It is my prayer and that of our Good Shepherd leadership that we will be able to continue to grow as a community of mutual respect grounded in the love and grace of God in Jesus Christ. We pray that Good Shepherd can indeed be a beloved community where we see in one another the very face of Jesus. Let it be so.
Now, as we enter into this time of worship, we continue to look at what it means to release oppressive expectations about perfection in our lives and in our faith. This week, we turn to a harmful idea that the prescription for our fear of failure is simply to work harder. As the book Good Enough reminds us, we might feel that we are climbing an endless staircase of achievement for high grades or success in caregiving or work or in social pressure. But this Lent, we are taking time to stop climbing ladders and staircases to tend our souls slowly and lovingly, tilling the soil and the fertilizer and embracing our good enough lives. Will you pray with me? Holy One, our balm, our feast, we lift our hands and call your name in need of healing, thirsting, and hungry. Your steadfast love is better than life. Open us this day to your nourishment in the songs of the land, in the beauty of the sky, in the simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. Let us worship the living God together. Casting my cares aside Leaving my past behind I'm setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus I'm reaching my hand to yours Believing there's so much more Knowing that all you have in store for me is good It's good, today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it rejoice and be glad in it and i won't worry about tomorrow i'm trusting in what you say today is a day today is a day i'm putting my fears aside i'm leaving my doubts behind i'm giving my hopes and dreams to you jesus Reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good. It's good, today is the day you have made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. About tomorrow, I'm trusting in what you say. Today is a day. Today is a day. I will stand up on your truth, and all my days I'll live for you. I will stand up on your truth And all my days I'll live for you Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it And I won't worry about tomorrow sorrows where you lead me i will follow I'm trusting in what you say today is a day today is a day today is a day today is a day today is a day, today is a day. Hi, me now 
storm Father you are king over the flood I will be still and know you are God Find rest my soul and cry As we pray for peace, dear Lord, draw us closer to your heart that we might know you better and understand you more completely. We pray that we not only give things up for Lent, but that we would give you glory through Lent. May our actions reflect our hearts and may we worship you through all that we say and do throughout the weeks to come. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Good morning, everybody. I hope you all had an awesome week, and you, I hope you are ready to get some work done in our garden this week. Last week, we remember we planted some seeds, but seeds need a little bit more than just some dirt in order to grow, don't they? Does anyone know what plants need to grow? I think we might think some things like sunshine and water and of course good dirt, but a lot of plants, especially ones in pots like the ones we planted last week, need something called fertilizer. Now kids, do you know what fertilizer is? It comes in many forms, but the most organic, natural, Good for the plants fertilizer that gardeners and farmers use is something like what we're going to have in church on Sunday. And if you come, you can smell it too, and you'll notice that it is not very good to smell. Maybe if we've ever visited a farm um, or even driven by a farm, we've smelled that fertilizer smell. Or, you know, even when they do mulch in the spring, mulch doesn't always smell good but it is good for the plants. It's like medicine for the dirt and for our seeds. It makes it healthier and then whatever grows in it, whatever comes out of our seeds will be healthy too. It's kind of funny that mixing the gross stuff in is what helps it grow, but I guess that is what will help us to understand that lots of things can be medicine. Even sometimes the icky stuff, like cough syrup or doing chores or saying I'm sorry. Those things aren't pleasant, but they help us grow and be healthy. So I want us to take a second and think about the plants that we're gonna fertilize on Sunday. Do you think, are they going to grow right away when we put that fertilizer in? I would really like them to, but I bet that they're not. But if we sit and watch, nothing might happen. Hmm, but is that really right? 
Because something will be happening, but it's not maybe a, as fast as we want it to. Once the plants are fertilized, it's time to chill, chill out, and know that sometimes growth happens slowly without too much effort. We have to let the roots soak up the nutrients of the fertilized soil slowly and be patient. Sometimes just being patient and present is the only thing that we need to do. So while we wait for our plants to grow, let's say our repeat after me prayer and then take some time for us to rest and grow as well. Repeat after me. I look at you. I look at me. I celebrate what I see. Cause God made all the smooth and rough. No matter what, you're good enough. As we end our children's time, I want to invite adults to also consider this week the things in our lives that might smell, but when we allow them to just be for a bit, might eventually be good for our own growth. In this way, let this children's time lead us. Good morning, Good Shepherd. Our gospel reading this morning is from Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. At that time, at that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because those Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, and there was none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. If not, you can cut it down. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God.
As we prepare to hear God's word this day, would you pray with me? Holy God, come into our lives and spirits and homes this day and remind us that who we are in your grace is good enough. But also remember, Lord, help us to remember, Lord God, that we are called to nurture not only our lives, but the lives of all whom you love. May we do so. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, during this Lent, we are engaged in the series entitled Good Enough, where we are being challenged to confront our need for perfection. Last week, we confronted our need to let go in order to allow a space for God to work. Today, we're going to be exploring how we are called to nurture our spirits and those of God's beloved, to change our minds in a way that we can bear the fruit of God's love, not perfectly, but faithfully. In our gospel lesson today, we hear about an unproductive fruit tree. Oh, the shame of being unproductive. Cut it down. Make room for a more dedicated and hardworking fig tree. Well, more about that later. There's a specific context to this parable that Jesus tells. As Jesus is speaking to a crowd, some of those gathered seek Jesus' opinion on some current affairs. They want Jesus to tie some tragic events to some divine imperative for the audience. In other words, in light of some very difficult events where God's people have been killed or hurt, they're saying to Jesus, make it make sense, Jesus. In their minds, they had always learned that people suffered because of something they did or something their parents did. But Jesus challenges them to change the way that they think. We read that at that very time there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Sounds pretty gruesome, doesn't it? And Jesus asks them, do you think that because these Galileans, of which he was a part by the way, suffered in this way because they were worse sinners than all of the other Galileans? No, I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will perish as they did. Or he continues, those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Selum fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all of the others living in Jerusalem? No, he says, I tell you. But unless you repent, unless you change your ideas, you will all perish just as they did. Jesus encourages them to shuv, S-H-U-V, to shuv in the Hebrew, to turn away from this way of thinking and towards God. Because their way of thinking led to judgment and pain for themselves and for others. And Jesus illustrates this with this parable of the fig tree. He says, a man had planted a fig tree in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, and he found none. And so he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I came looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I still find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The man who owned the vineyard judged that the tree was of no value, that it was wasting soil. What good is it? But there is a key issue with this tree. There is still more that can be done to nurture that tree. And the gardener points this out by saying, Sir, let it alone for one more year. Until I dig around it now, put some manure on it. And then if it bears fruit next year, Good, well and good. If not, well then, then you can cut it down. Well, this parable, I think, applies to us in a couple of ways. First, I want to invite us to consider ourselves as the fig tree. Who among us is living up to our fullest potential? How many times are we judged based on our ability to produce or not? 
You know, even when we meet somebody for the first time, we tend to ask, what do you do? Rather than, what do you believe? Or tell me about who you are. What do you do? Sometimes we feel less valuable if we have not produced enough in a society that measures what we do at every turn so that we can answer questions like that well. And a society that asks too often, what can you do for me? Perhaps we have even heard the phrase said in our society, you are a waste of space, said towards us or someone else who is perceived not to be contributing enough to a community or to this world. We sadly can cut one another down if we perceive that the other is not producing what we want or we believe that they should be giving. And that's because our society is so focused on production. Do you know there are actual productivity experts these days that can promise us to diagnose what's wrong with us and why we're not doing enough, and they sell us systems and products and programs that in three amazing sessions for a low, low price are guaranteed to turn our lives around and make us productive people. You know, churches are not exempt for this. We've been told more than once over the years that if we only follow this program, these proven steps, we will grow and produce more members. But the gardener in Jesus' parable offers us an alternative medicine. He sees that the tree is in a season where it needs to be nurtured because it's struggling to bear fruit. I wonder if any of us have had seasons like that where we have struggled and felt a bit barren like that tree. I wonder if we see others around us who may likewise be struggling. The gardener in this parable suggests that if we nurture the tree, whether it be us or others, slowly surrounding it with good soil, the love of God, God's word, God's love, letting it soak in the nutrients, the love and grace of Jesus, that it can indeed grow and bear fruit. Even though it may be a different kind of fruit than what society tells us we should produce. God's fruit being produced in our lives is always good enough. The significance of fruit bearing is a theme throughout Luke. John the Baptist preaching in Luke chapter 3 describes that just interpersonal dealings are the fruit of repentance. In the Sermon on the Plain, in Luke's Gospel, the sixth chapter, Jesus states that a good tree produces good fruit, and similarly, a good person produces the fruit of God's love from a faithful heart. In the parable of the sower, in Luke 8, Jesus explains that those with good hearts hear the word of God. They hold fast to it, and they patiently produce fruit. With this evidence leading up to this chapter in Luke, the fig tree clearly represents the human heart. And God is not anxious to cut us down, but rather to grow us up. The second way that this parable applies is in the barrenness of the tree itself. Trees are meant to have branches that reach outward, that are ever growing. Because you see, trees do not produce fruit for themselves. What good is fruit to the tree? But is nourishing food for the community. The only part of the fruit that really helps the tree is the seed. Because that's what's necessary for more trees to be grown, right? Well, Jesus' message is clear. Do not be like the fruitless tree. Have branches that are reaching outward to offer the nourishment of God's love to others. Because we exist, the body of Christ, to feed others with the fruit, the love of Jesus. And if we are focused 
either on ourselves and our own health alone, or if we are focused on the gravity of others' transgressions or what they are not producing, well, we might be getting it wrong. Because Jesus wants us to make sure that we are producing good fruit. And so instead of assigning causality to others' misfortune, their barrenness, we need to ensure that we're not ignoring our own missing fruit and branches that are not growing outward. Jesus' words suggest that tending to one's own life and positively changing one's own mind is the best strategy to prevent or even persevere through unexpected calamity. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. says it this way, love is creative and redemptive. Love builds up and unites. Hate tears down and destroys. For both the tree and the community longing for its fruit, being fertilized in God's love is so important. We need to be fertilized with the laughter and tears at the crappy stuff of life, for it can help heal what ails us. Is this not sometimes productive enough to be a community where laughter and love and grace nourish those who are a part of it and help them to reach outward to others? I believe that what our society needs more than anything is to be told that they are enough. That we can help them to grow. That we can nourish them with God's love. I end with this sermon by asking us this simple question. What expectations of producing are holding you and I captive? I want you to think about that. What expectations of productivity are keeping you and I and our church captive? Let us take a moment to pray, shall we? Hear these words from Isaiah. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Know that already God is offering us love enough, no matter how much we attain or achieve. We are invited this day to release oppressive expectations of ourselves and others so that we might recognize true worth afforded to all. O oh God, despite our faltering steps, despite our barrenness, despite seasons where we cannot bear enough fruit, remind us that in your grace and your love, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we are enough. And let us continue to nurture ourselves in the soil of your grace and your love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me go. I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. all my way I yield my flickering torch to thee my heart restores its borrowed ray that in thy sunshine's blaze its day may brighter fairer be oh joy that's 
seekest me through pain. I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain. That morn shall tearless be. Good morning. At this time, I ask that you pray with me as we lift these prayers and concerns. Please pray for the people and government of Ukraine and the global community, world leaders as they make difficult decisions. Pray for patience and understanding for those who are currently healing and recovering from recent procedures. Pastor Jean Parr, Jim Hyphantis, Pam Donahue, Lisa Boyce, and Bill Berry. Pray for Ken Gressens with health concerns, Joe Hanley and her family at this time, Nancy McGuire and decisions to be made, the Penley family affected by COVID, schools, teachers, students, and especially our school of the week, Walter J. Mitchell Elementary School. Pray for the direction of our children's ministry here and churches everywhere. Finally, pray for peace on our earth. At this time, quietly lift your prayers to the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Lord, throughout this Lenten season, as written by Rachel Dawson, May our praise never cease this season. May our worship be unending. May our love for you find new depths. May this season bring new hope and new healing. May we journey toward the cross prayerfully and purposely, even through the pain, our doubt, our questions, and our searching. And now let us say the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. It is that time of the service when we are invited to invest ourselves in the work of God, to plant seeds in the soil of God's kingdom. And so I invite you this day to consider how God might be asking you to give to the work of Good Shepherd and beyond. As always, you can give via our online portal, our app, or by sending your donation directly to Good Shepherd. I also want to remind you that throughout the, Mar the month of March, our special offering is for youth mission. We have a team of youth and adults who will be joining La Plata United Methodist Church the end of June to go to Appalachia Service Project. And so your offerings will help them. One more reminder that they are also doing a Seas Candy fundraiser during this month. This week is the last week to go ahead and order those good, wonderful chocolates, a sweet way to support youth mission at Good Shepherd. Will you pray with me? Generous God, in light of your extravagant blessings, no matter what the state of the world or of our imperfect lives, we offer our gifts and ourselves and know that you transform what we plant into the produce of love. Amen.
that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we've come to give you thanks for all you've done. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up, songs of freedom, forever we're changed because of your love. As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing. That you poured out so freely from above Lifting gratitude and praises For compassion so amazing Lord, we've come to give you thanks for all you've done Because of your love, we're forgiven Because of your love hearts are free. We lift you up, songs of freedom, forever we're changed because of your love. this blessing as we prepare to end our time together. Blessed are we who stop. Okay, maybe not stop entirely. Who are we kidding? But who slow down. We who discover rest and new life and renewal when we step off the treadmill or at least turn it down. We who remember that the world keeps spinning without us. And we thank God for that. We who remember that we are loved, loved, loved. Just being us. Because we are enough. Receive now this benediction as we go out this day. And now may the God who loves all of creation and you without price and Jesus, our companion, along this crooked path called life. And the Holy Spirit, who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with you, dwell with you, and give you joy. Amen and amen. <laughs>